Jump to your pockets, please. Sure. Nathan Levine, 557 West 30th Street. Now, uh, you got the wrong Nathan Levine. Uh -huh. Aren't you the guy they call the bag man? <laughs> oh, that's another Nathan Levine. There are 32 Nathan Levines in the greater New York area. Hey, how do you know that? We got a club. <laughs> World Series, 1936. Hey, 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 give me that. Sit down, Nathan. Chill. Now, where'd you move the policy room, huh? Who knows from policies? I'm not in the insurance business. <laughs> One rotten Nathan Levine gives the rest of us a bad name. Yeah, well, if you're not running numbers, what's these betting slips? Betting slips? Yeah, these betting slips. Angelo P, 611, dash, dash, 50 cents. Oh, 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 that's a friend of mine. Mm. Angelo Palermo, uh, 611. That's his birthday, June the 11th. <laughs> What's the 50 cents for? That's what I'm going to give him. <laughs> hey, how are you, Fish? Good morning. I feel fine, unless there's some sort of a disease to forget someone's name once in a while. Uh, it happens all the time. It came right back to me, Bernice. <laughs> but she wants to make a big deal out of it. You forgot Bernice's name? Only for a second. <laughs> I know who she was. I just couldn't think of what to call her. <laughs> now she says, uh, I'm losing the rest of my faculty. Hey, how many of those checks you got? Thirteen. Totaling $374.30. <coughs> well, why would a guy pass out that much paper for so little cash? Well, he's crooked, but he's not greedy. <laughs> uh, just look like the same dude to you. I don't know. Checks are not my specialty. Bills are more in my life. <laughs> peculiarities? I haven't got any. Uh, everybody's got peculiarities. I'm sorry, I haven't oh, got come any. Come on, Nathan, let's have them. Oh, yeah, what's going on? It's being uncooperative, Captain. I mean, he won't answer any of the questions right. Why don't you make it easy on yourself, Mr. Levine? Cooperate with Detective Roger Howard, so answer the questions. Peculiarities. I sleep in the nude. <laughs> sleep in the nude. Is that what you wanted to know? Just trying to do my job. Well, tell the doctor I apologize. I just forgot, yeah. Today, 2 o'clock. OK, thanks. I don't remember making that appointment. Maybe I am going out of my mind. Yeah, when you're getting older, that's the first thing that goes. <laughs> Not according to Bernice. <laughs> better than the old one? Well, the old one got about the size of a dime. I got about that thin. It got very difficult. When you got the two pieces together, you couldn't get any lather. Nice to see you, Mike. Bingo. We got a make on that paper hanger. It's Harold Polanski, and I got three possible addresses. Let's go. Uh, I'll tell you, I don't know how they get away with it. Oh, man, most people are very poor judges of character. Yeah, well, it really burns me up. Anytime I want to cash a check, nobody wants to take it. Hey, man. I mean, look at you. What? Well, I mean, you wear dishonest clothes. I never have no trouble. You know, you're right. Most people are very poor judges of character. <laughs> Raincoat and British walkers. You really mean business today, huh? Yes. I'm on a new case. 
Social service is called this morning. Now, in case I don't get home in time, this is David's okay, piano okay, teacher. Okay. Where are they sending it today? South Bronx. South Bronx? That's a rough area. The Rockefellers in East Hampton don't need me. <laughs> Have you checked? No. Snap judgment. What kind of case you got? Oh, it's um, a mother whose son just got out of prison. Ex-convict. Oh, Barney. And he can't get a job, and she has two other sons, both involved in street gangs and both dropouts, and the husband drinks. Couldn't they give you something easy once in a while? Like an unwed mother? They save the biggies for the best. Well, the South Bronx, that's no picnic there. Gang wars, arson. Well, I admit I'm a little nervous, but it's a challenge. I mean, I know it's dangerous, but it's stimulating all at the same time. My blood pressure hasn't been this high in years. Thanks. Oh. Uh, I mean, in the daytime. You know, you kiss good for a social worker. Oh, thanks, thanks. My field supervisor will be very pleased. She asked me if I had good relations with the police. What did you tell her? I said, uh, whenever I could. Listen, uh... Give me a call when you get up there. Oh, Barney, it's not necessary. I'll all be perfectly right, all right. Okay, okay. Goodbye. Give me a call anyway. Huh? Oh, Barney. <laughs> Take care, Miss Mullen. I will, Woj. Thanks. Bye-bye. Oh, look, look, look at this. You see? You save all the little pieces. And after about a year, you, you melt them together, and you get a whole new bar of soap. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice to see you again, Mike. <laughs> Bye. Oh, thank you, Fish. How's Bernice? Fine, fine, thank you, Liz. Oh, give her my love. Oh, and tell her I'm sorry I forgot her birthday yesterday. Oh. Okay, just uh, sit here at the desk again. Uh, oh, hey, Inspector. I'll make an hour, Joe. All right. Hey, well, well, if it isn't Nathan the bag man. Hello, Inspector. Hey, Nate. What they nail you for this time? Same old thing? Policy. Uh, yeah, huh? Well, a leper will never change his stripes. Hello? <laughs> Day old bakery? <laughs> What do you got laying around that says, Happy Birthday, Bernice? See what we got here. Previous conviction, seven. That's all, Nate? Well, a man can't be unlucky all the time. <laughs> Peculiarities? Sleeps in the nude. What's with sleeps in the nude? That's a statement. Oh, come on, that ain't peculiarities. Peculiarities is if a man goes around collecting woman shoes up in that line. They don't do nothing like that, do they? Nah. Nah, of course not. He may be a bag man, but he ain't a weird bag man. <laughs> World Series, 1936. Look at this. Huh? Carl Hubble. Lou Gehrig, Mel Ott. Hmm. 1936, I was at that World Series. No kidding. That was before I was born. No kidding. <laughs> Happy birthday, Bernie. You ought to be able to shove in a C in there somewhere. Stop by to see you. Come on inside. Thank you. Oh, uh, excuse me, Inspector. Mm. Uh, you got my baseball. Oh, ha. Which here? <laughs> <laughs> Old head and ball trick, huh? Hey, you want to sell it, will you? Nope. I'd give you $20 for it. No, thanks. Yeah. I thought Polish people like the bowl. <laughs> Money that uh, Wojo Ho is. He a good cop? Wojo? Yeah. Well, he don't know much about human nature. <laughs> uh, Mike, uh, hold my calls for a few minutes, will you? If Liz calls, put her right through, though. Right. Why, well, I gotta talk to you. Sure. What can I do for you? 
I've been offered this job with the parole board, Barney, and I've kind of been debating in my mind as to whether I should take it or not. Parole board? You should be flattered by the offer. I am. I am, Bob. All them important cases to discuss, you know, and evaluating the pros and the cons. One of one, I and all them people in jail filing their petitions to get out again, you know, join us in this society. But I, I guess I gotta take it, Barney. I mean, somebody's gotta keep them firemen behind bars, right? <laughs> what do you think, Barney? I think we need you more right here, Inspector. <laughs> oh, yeah. The more you think about it, <laughs> Hello. Oh, thanks, Mike. Hello, Liz? Okay, you got there okay. I just wanted to... I, I can't hear you. What's going... I can't hear you. Who's arguing in the back there? The brothers having an argument. Wonderful. All right, listen, as long as you're... Uh, did, what was... Something break, Liz? Liz, are you okay? Yeah. What... What's going on there? Was that glass smashing, Liz? Liz, are you okay? Look, Liz... Liz! Liz! The phone went dead. Yeah, I guess maybe you're right, Barney. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay, okay. Barney, there's, there's no way they can trace the call. Uh -huh. I was afraid, man. Look, call the 5-1 in the Bronx. Uh, tell them I want to talk to the watch commander. The Department of Social Services says she was sent up here. Oh, thanks, Mike. Uh, Barney, uh, I got the 5-1 on, on line two. Uh, tell him I'll take him to my office. Thanks for the nice power, Barney. Right. I'll give you $25. Uh, no, thanks. Why not, well, Joe? Well, I'm uh, just used to having it on my desk, Inspector. Uh, come on, what's it to you? The red roughing, Lefty Gomez, Twinkle Toes Selkirk. All right, 30 bucks, my final offer. I just don't want to sell it, Inspector. Okay, Wojciechowicz. <laughs> That's the way you want it? You know, sometimes a man could use a friend among the higher ups in this little New York City department of us. Yeah. See you around, man. Oh, All right, inside. Stand over here, Mr. Lansky. Big deal of a lousy little baseball, but right out of luck. Take a seat over there, please. Uh, what's the difference standing, sitting? I don't care anymore. Man, this dude's got checks from banks in 32 states, including Hawaii. Huh? Yeah, and look at this. The blank checks match the checks he's cashed. Well, looks like we got you, Mr. Polanski. What is that, something new? It's the story of my life. Yeah? Yeah, they sit up there laughing at me. The break givers, the gods of men. Nothing for you today, Polanski! We got a load and no luck for you again! Yeah, you sure? No 1052 at that address. Well, my, my wife went up there on a case, Frank, and I got a call from her and... Look, uh, would you do me a favor and... Send a car around. I know, you don't like to go in there. I, I'd consider it a personal favor, Frank. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah, I think we got him up here. Are you Nathan Levine? I'm one of them. <laughs> yeah, we got him up here. They got his bail ticket. Yeah, okay. I gotta go see a doctor. I got a two o'clock appointment. It's only quarter to one. I also gotta pick up a cake. <laughs> Hope it ain't serious. It will be if they don't find a seat. <laughs> no, I mean, uh, I hope uh, whatever you got ain't serious. Of course it's serious. Everything that happens to you immediately following the age of puberty is serious. <laughs> really? You'll find out when you get there. <laughs> the final hour 
I mean, it's a baseball. What's the big deal? Hey, man, why didn't you just give it to him? I use it as a paperweight. Hey, well, Joe, man, you could use a rock. Next thing, he'd come along and want my rock. <laughs> There's no end to blackmail. Hey, Mr. Polanski, have a seat right over there at my desk. Sign these papers, huh? Hey, Harris. Yeah. Fingerprints check out. Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, we had to take some new pictures. You gained some weight since the last ones, eh, Mr. Polanski? Yeah, it's killed. Makes you eat like a pig. <laughs> I used to be taller, too. Hey, man, I called over to uh, Manhattan South. They said they'll pick him up later. Okay. Hey, uh, hurry it up, will you, Mr. Polanski? Easy. I'm not used to signing my own name. <laughs> His checks are really great, man. He's an artist, I'm telling you. Yeah, it's a curse. I wanted to go into politics. I am a student of American history. You know, when I was a kid, I used to dream about signing the Declaration of Independence. Oh, yeah? Now I can. <laughs> you want to tell Captain Miller we got his wife Never here? mind, thank you. I'll tell him myself. Hello. 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 You all right? Well, I am a little embarrassed. Over what? Five policemen walked into that room and removed me as if I were a brownie in a forest fire. <laughs> I'm sorry. I thought you were in trouble. All that shouting on the phone, that furniture breaking. There was a family discussion and somebody was making a point. What about the glass breaking? There are two sides to every discussion. Who pulled the phone out of the wall? Everyone. It's the only thing they all agreed on. What are they fighting about? Oh. The older son, the ex-convict, can't get a job and he was taking it out on the family. The furniture. I'm sorry. My first day on a new case, and I'm preempted. Yeah. Barney, excuse me. Here's the sheet on Polanski. No question about it. He's the guy that's been passing all the bad paper around. Three arrests, two convictions. Yeah, he's a very talented fellow. Look at the signatures he made for me. Hey. Benjamin Franklin. <laughs> Thomas Jefferson. John Hancock. They look perfect. They are perfect. Why does he keep getting into trouble? Well, you see, he goes on parole, he can't get a job, writes a bad check, goes back in again. Gets on parole again, yeah, can't thank, get a job. Thank you, yeah. <laughs> You know, a man like that, I mean, this could be an artist. Of course, I haven't heard of anyone starting out writing the signature first and then doing the painting. But... <laughs> it's not just ex-convicts. Everybody's having a tough time getting a job today. That's true. Who's your ex conduit He's a lathe operator. Got his training in the machine shop at Sing Sing. Do you have any real experience? Are you kidding? He was doing ten to life. Mm. <laughs> Those are real credentials. <laughs> All right, I'll see you at home about six, huh? Um, seven. Seven? Seven. I have another call to make. Where is it this time? The Middle East? <laughs> you really want to know? No. I'm going to try and do it cold turkey. Hey, Barney, look. Winston Churchill, Pablo Picasso, Eddie Fisher. Eddie Fisher? <laughs> They're remarkable forgeries. Oh, he calls them biographs. Yeah, very good. Yeah, maybe so. But he can't do Julian Bond yet. <laughs> Fish. What did the doctor say? He said I, I was at, uh, at the time of my life when my body is going through changes. <laughs> so, sounds like menopause. <laughs> it is menopause. I caught it from Bernice. It's not, it's, not giving you, it's not giving you all that much trouble, is it? Well, just a little difficulty in remembering things. What's the serial number of your gun? 
186-693-4788. See? And you got priorities. You're, you're more selective about your memory. You remember things that are important to you. You think so? Sure. What's your anniversary? Sometime in February. <laughs> Twelfth. They're twelve. <laughs> right. One eight six six nine three four seven eight eight. Pretty good. Polanski. Yeah. Social service has never been able to help you with a job, has it? Nobody has ever done anything for me. Well, if you're ever lucky enough to get paroled again, give me a call. Well, I need a cop. Cops do not help Big Con. Maybe, but you're in luck. I happen to have a wife who's a social worker. Well, I happen to have a brother. He owns a machine shop in Huntington, Long Island. Polanski's foundry and ironworks. He's making money hand over fist. You think he'd help me? Forget it. He would help anybody in the world except me. Right? Right. <laughs> Huntington, Long Island. Right. Thanks. You're welcome. Who wants Clark Gable? <laughs> Fine, Bonnie. Hello, Inspector. Bonnie, I took your good advice to heart. You'll be happy to know that I decided to stay here right where I am. You and all your men on the old firing line. We would have missed you, Inspector. Ah, I would have missed you, too. Most of you. <laughs> Excuse me a minute. Uh, yeah, got sure. a phone call to make. Go ahead, Bonnie. Well, I'm at Here on. Inspector. Uh, uh, Inspector Luger. Yes? What is it, Detective Wojo Howitz? <laughs> I've uh, decided to change my mind about the ball. The ball. What? Ah, just... ah, forget it, son. I, I, I put it completely out of my head. I'm not interested in buying a ball. Well, I'm not. Talking about selling it to you, I'm talking about giving it Let to you. Let not sweet talk me with that soft soap, will you? Because you. You what? Giving it to you. You mean you got it? Well, that's, uh, that's a darn decent of you, will you? I, I hardly know. What? Hey, huh? Inspector, uh. It means a lot more to you than it does to me. That's true. <laughs> you know, softy, you. <laughs> oh, Hubble. Lou Gehrig. John Hancock. <laughs> Was, uh, was, he, was he with the Giants? No, uh, he was one of the original Yankees. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you're telling the infielder, right? <laughs> yeah, that's one, two, three, strike two. present from our forger friend, the Declaration of Independence. Is <laughs> he dry yet? Barely. <laughs> hey, is his John Hancock as good as the one he did for me? He didn't use John Hancock. He used Harold Polanski. <laughs> well, that makes it a genuine forgery. Listen, it's OK by me. As long as he's writing his own name, he's not writing somebody else's. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you.
Coffee ready yet? Here you go. For the last time. Hey, what do you mean, last time? Are we, uh, we running out of coffee? No, you're running out of me. It's a New Year's resolution. I'm not going to make any coffee in 1976. Oh, man, that's ridiculous. You always make the coffee. <laughs> it's practically a tradition. I don't care. I am fed up to hear with remarks like, hey, you wash your socks in the coffee. Hey, Nick. Hey, Nick. Uh, you might be a cop, but your uh, coffee is a crime. <laughs> you make it for a couple of years and see how you like it. Hey, man, I can't make coffee. I mean, I might fashion a little beef burging yaw, open a couple bottles of wine, and I don't even fool with coffee. Yeah, I don't care. It's 9.15, that's probably my last pot. Hey, hi, Woods. Boy, is it uh, getting jammed up out there, you know? Yeah? Yeah. Happy New Year, guys. <laughs> man, I mean, you're not gonna be doing that all night, are you? Hey, I'm just trying to keep you in a good mood, you know? I mean, just because we got to work New Year's Eve is no reason we got to be miserable. No, we don't have to. It's uh, just a thought. <laughs> okay, Mr. Jackson, you want to stand right here, please? <laughs> Careful with my hands. My fingers are my life. Pianist? Pick bucket. <laughs> see right over there, Mr. Jackson? Right there. Good evening, gentlemen. Happy New Year to you all. Hi. Happy New Year, Barn. <laughs> Lovely, Wojo. I didn't know you play one of those things. <laughs> Just uh, trying to keep everybody in a good mood. Uh, he's doing a wonderful job. <laughs> Chris Fish. Oh, he's coming right behind me, Barney. Bringing in the victim of this pocket picker. Uh, first festival of the evening. Yeah. Maybe you ought to give him a prize. You shame you had to get me so early. New Year's Eve is my best night of the year. Ours, too. It's getting tougher to make a buck in this city. We don't get the World Series anymore. All the good fights are coming from Africa. Yeah, you should do better with the bicentennial. And don't forget, the Democratic Convention is coming up. Well, that's all on the come. What do I do in the meantime? <laughs> OK, OK, I'll take your sobriety test. Now, what's more, I ain't gonna pass it. <laughs> Shall we get this man a cup of coffee? Yeah, we still got time. Good coffee tonight, Nick. You're too late. <laughs> Just because I'm bombed, that don't mean that I don't know the second I become robbed. This is our victim. This is Michael D. Crowley, Bonnie. Mr. Crowley is in the construction business. You prepared to uh, sign a complaint? You bet I am. I'm also prepared to knock his nose right through his kitties. <laughs> Violence. As if that were the answer. Sure. No values, Mr. Jackson. I mean, look around you. No values. Here you go. What's in it? <laughs> Don't we wish we knew? <laughs> See? Mr. Uh, Crowley is to remain here until he's sober enough to sign that complaint. That could mean February. <laughs> For precinct, what you want? Happy New Year. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, sit tight, we'll be there. Hey, uh, Barn? Uh, the clerk's over at Chrysler's Drugstore, they're holding the shoplifter. All right, Nick, go with him. 12 precinct fish. Where? The mercantile building? What floor is he on? The 15th? Yeah, that could kill him, I guess. <laughs> Did you tell him that suicide was not the answer and he's got a lot to live for and all that malarkey? <laughs> he didn't buy it. <laughs> what does he want? A piece of what? <laughs> oh, just plain peace. I'll see if you can get a net under him, and we'll get someone over. Barney, there's a wacko on a ledge on the mercantile building who says he's going to jump unless there's peace in the Mideast before midnight. The man's in a lot of trouble. <laughs> Somebody ought to check it out, I guess. OK, go ahead. I just wish he'd have picked an easier spot, like, like Spain or Canada. <laughs>
12th Precinct, Captain Miller speaking. I beg your pardon? Uh, no, it, it is not against the law between consenting adults. If it's, hello? Hello? <laughs> You know, you got very light fingers, Mr. Jackson. <laughs> you almost couldn't read your prints. Thank you. <laughs> you guys got any aspirin? <laughs> uh, Chano, could you look in Fish's desk there for some aspirin, please? Oh, sure. <laughs> what kind would you like? We got, uh... We got pills, we got time capsules, chewing gum, liquid. You pick it. I'm in no condition to make a decision. Yeah, yeah, well, uh, how about uh, time capsules, in case you got future plans? Yeah. Uh, which place is back? <laughs> oh. How'd it go? We got a priest up there talking to him, but he wants to talk to Kissinger. <laughs> Should I take a message? Did it do any good? He gave me until midnight to get the Israelis off the Golan Heights. <laughs> well, uh, you're good fish, but I don't know. He said he can't face a new year with the threat of nuclear confrontation between us and Russia. And I, I would say he was crazy. Now I'm not so sure. He was very persuasive, Bonnie. For a moment there, I was thinking of jumping with him. Do what you could. I haven't tried Kissinger. What? Are you serious? What have I got to lose? Do you have any idea where he is? Somebody ought to know. Hello, everybody. Hi. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year, Fish. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. I thought you were going to ring in the new with Bernice. Oh, I am. I am. And I promise I'll be off the streets by midnight. But I wanted you all to know that you are not forgotten. So I brought you hors d'oeuvres and cookies and fruit and hats. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> now, we all get hats. Wojo only got a horn. <laughs> Besides, I wanted to see you first. Uh -huh. Have a little time to fool around in your office? What did you have in mind? How much time do you have? A couple of minutes. Oh, well. It's a good long handshake, isn't it? Don't cry, Mom. No, no, get upset, no. No, no, no. Speaking. Senora, ¿qué le pasa? I don't understand anything I was saying. And I don't know what she's talking about. No, I'm going to leave her. Siéntese aquí un momento. I got all frustrated. Mira, yo arreglo la cosa entera. No te apures. What's all that? That's Ms. Rodriguez. She's the shoplifting suspect from Chrysler's drugstore. Oh, man, is she right? Yeah, it's got me real worried. Is there any coffee left? No, you'll have to get Barney to make you some. Happy New Year. You're one hour, eight minutes, and about 32 seconds early. Mommy, you come back a little later? I'd rather you didn't. Life is tough enough as it is around here. It's your last chance for a little scandal in 1975. Are you trying to ruin my reputation? No, I'm trying to give you one. <laughs> oh, well. Here's a little something to brighten up the old one, two at midnight. Better be a lamp. Because we're still on duty. Oh, it's just champagne, oh, no. Barney. I think you deserve no, a little sorry. sip. I'm sorry. I appreciate the uh, thought, but uh, rules are rules. <laughs> it's only 12% alcohol. You'll still be upholding 88% of the law. <laughs> Curses the feds. Yeah, I don't know you. Come in. 
Excuse me. Uh, but Barney, we got a problem. What's it? Well, uh, that uh, shop shoplifter we brought in, she she's pregnant. Oh. Listen, make her as comfortable as possible, will you? Uh, no, Barney. I, I mean, she, she's really pregnant. <laughs> She, uh, I think she could have a kid right there at my desk. <laughs> you mean she's in labor? Uh, I, I don't know, uh, but I think it's too late for that. <laughs> Ask her if she's had a baby before. Was that thing you doing, Juan? No, no. Barney, I think we should get her into your office. She looks very faint uh, to me. Come, no, come, come, come. no, no, uh, no. Just, uh, no. We're trying to make her more comfortable. Solamente queremos que esté más cómoda. No, no se puede. What does she say? She says it's impossible. <laughs> well, we're going to try anyway. Vamos a tratar, señora. Uh, tell her to breathe very rapidly through uh, her mouth, like this. <laughs> uh, que respire por la boca rápidamente, así. <laughs> Tell her this is my wife, and she's already had two children of her own. Es la esposa del capitán. Ya ha tenido dos hijos ella. Aquí? No, 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 they, they won't get here till 12.30, man. Oh, wow. Huh. Wouldn't it be funny if the baby was born right at the stroke of midnight? <laughs> Inconvenient, yes. Funny, yeah. Hey, Barney. There are 12 obstetricians in a 15-block area. Eight of them are either out of town or out on calls. Isn't that way? Kissinger isn't in either. <laughs> I left messages on all the other exchanges. You better look into uh, paramedics. What, is she that close? She's close enough for me. I'll keep trying. Yeah, I'll, let me help you. How are you doing? The State Department suggested that maybe someone from the Israeli consulate here explain to the wacko about the Golan Heights. <laughs> and if there are any promises made, to be sure to let them know immediately. <laughs> no, Mr. Crowley, you want to sign this stuff? What is it? Complaint forms charging uh, Mr. Jackson here with third-degree grand larceny. Oh, I don't sign nothing until I read it. Take your time. <laughs> hey, read this for me, will you? I can't see without my glasses. <laughs> Two standard felony complaint 15534. It ought to get me about one to five. With good behavior, I ought to be back on the streets in 77. A little more resentful towards society. <laughs> With a little less faith in the capacity of human beings to forgive. Hey, wait a minute. I didn't steal your wallet, you stole mine. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. The Lord's got nothing to do with this. The Lord didn't walk into that bar and steal my wallet. <laughs> You got a chance here to teach a person a great moral lesson. You don't want it? Get lost. Oh. Oh, she's okay. She's a little embarrassed. She's never been arrested before. What, uh, what'd she take anyway? Oh, uh, just uh, some baby stuff. You know, uh, it's a diapers, uh, talcum powder, and baby oil. Uh, hey, is that all it is? I mean, I'll pay for it myself. Uh, well, we offer to. Uh, they want to make a federal case out of it. All right, I'll call them up in the morning. Uh, Barney, uh, there's no answer at the consulate, and the United Nations number is no longer in service at the present time. <laughs> so I'm going to go back to the mercantile building. I only got 20 minutes. What are you going to tell them? I'm going to lie to him. I'm going to tell him that Israel is moving off the Golden Heights. <laughs> but, uh, what if he doesn't believe you? Well, I'm afraid we won't be seeing much of each other anymore. <laughs> Barney, Barney, she's in labor. Are you sure? Take my word for it. You ought to know. Uh, Barney? Uh, just a minute. Uh, I got one. It's a Dr. Richard Zimmerman. He's at uh, Herkimer General. Uh, Dr. Zimmerman. Yes, now, uh, we have a, uh, a pregnant lady here who uh, apparently is in labor. She is very definitely in labor. Who is very definitely in labor. 
Well, the way the streets are jammed up, we couldn't get a, an ambulance through or a doctor. No, she's never had a child before. Oh, I can't leave her alone. Barney, t tell him I've timed her contractions and they're coming two minutes apart. Uh, her contractions are coming two minutes apart. I see. We're gonna have a baby. <laughs> yes, we're, we're police officers, but um, we've had just a, a, you know, a certain amount of emergency medical training, you know, not... Uh, oh, okay, Pat, Pat. Pat, oh, hold on, hold on. Right, shoot. Okay. Water first, right. Second stage, cervical dilation, right. Bearing down pain, yes, I remember. Yes, I remember. Yes. <laughs> okay. Try to keep as clean as possible. Tie the cord. Cut the cord. <laughs> the baby warm and pat his feet. Pat his feet? What for? Oh, to stimulate crying. Pat the feet now, huh? Yes, right. right. Thank you very much. Okay? There it is. Uh, yeah. Sounds reasonable enough. <laughs> well, I mean, the doctor's gonna be here in 40 minutes. Oh, <laughs> just in time for his cigar, huh? <laughs> Oh, my God. Barney, the baby is coming. Oh. Uh, oh. Nick, pour some water. Yeah, as long as I don't have to put any coffee in it. <laughs> Harris, uh, sheets, shirts, blankets, anything you can coming find up, in the storeroom. Uh, Chani, you better get back in there and uh, keep communication lines open. Right. Roger, do we have any really strong soap? Uh, uh, just regular stuff. All right, then uh, see whatever kind of first aid equipment you can find. Yeah, uh, uh, have you ever delivered a baby before? Not yet. Uh, it can be kind of tricky, you know? Like, what if it's a breach? Or... Look, don't give me any problems I don't have yet. Yeah, Barn, I, th I just think I should do it. I, 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 and once before in Vietnam, I, I delivered one. By yourself? Yeah, well, uh, practically. I mean, there was this medic there, but he, he was all uh, hurt. I, I, I did it myself, you know? What do you know? There is a doctor in the house. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to live like this. Why don't you do something else? I'm not a very capable person. I'm just trying to hang in there. <laughs> so sign it and put me away. Take your pound of flesh. I don't want no pound of flesh. Then take my wallet. We'll be even. Let's hold it down. Have a little respect. We're having a baby in here. <laughs> Where the hell are we? Won't be long now. How's Wojo doing? Oh, he's doing great. You'd be so proud of him. Don't surprise me. Once he took a splinter out of my finger. <laughs> Hurry up. She wants you with her. The oh. baby's gonna come here I'm in a minute. I'm coming. It's gonna be fine. It's gonna be fine. <laughs> uh, 12 Precinct, Harris. <clears throat> yeah, well, if you snap it up a little bit, maybe you'll make it in time for the christening. <laughs> Bellevue. They finally got an ambulance loose. They said they'll send one over in a few minutes. Oh, big deal. <laughs> Listen, they make it, they make it. If not, we got it locked, right? <laughs> From your mouth to his ear. <laughs> yeah. What happens if I don't sign this? Huh? What, sign what? The complaint against him. Why wouldn't you sign it? The man stole your wallet. Uh, I just don't need the aggravation. You want him in jail, you put him in jail. It's not up to me, Mr. Crowley. It's up to you and a judge. And you and a judge, you work it out between you, you know? I got too many problems. <laughs> Nick, give Mr. Crowley back his evidence. Harris, turn him loose. Yeah, all right. You got a break tonight, Jackson. You might not be so lucky next time. Hey, I appreciate it. And I, I made a New Year's resolution. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's hear it. Next year, I'm gonna work a different precinct. <laughs> promises, promises. Hey, uh, Happy New Year, buddy. See you around. Did you hear something? It didn't sound like anybody did, huh? 
the boy. Huh? It's a magnificent oh, boy. Somebody gonna have a baby in here? Uh, get in there! You got the right place at the wrong tense. The baby's already here. Come on, take a Oh, Barney, Barney. He's beautiful. He's beautiful. And he's perfect from the top of his head to the tip of his tongue. Yeah, the kid ain't that bad either. <laughs> Congratulations. And according to my calculations, let's see, it was about allowing 15 seconds for hooping and hollering. It was about two minutes after 12. Uh, agreed? Right. Agreed. right. <laughs> How'd you do? You win one, you lose one. I'm sorry. Here's the baby. It's got hair. Chano. Sí, Elena. Ay, mire, dígame por favor a todos que muchas gracias por ayudarme y que yo quiero darle el nombre del señor ese al nene. Oh. <laughs> she would like to thank us all and she would like to name the baby after you. <laughs> ¿Cómo se llama? Ah. Uh, Wojciechowicz. <laughs> Whoa, whoa, Joe, it's... <laughs> just like, just, uh, just spell it, just like it sounds. Whoa, Joe, ho, it's... Happy New Year! Ah, Miss Noy. Tom, tell her... Stands all right. <laughs> Boy, what a New Year's Eve. The rest of the year's got to be downhill. Well, it'd be a cinch. Texas ain't due until April. <laughs> okay, I'm buying everybody breakfast. Come on, let's go, won't you? I don't think I could eat an egg. <laughs> this, come on. Be right with you. Bernice, it's not bad luck if you don't kiss your wife on the stroke of midnight. <laughs> yes, I know we did it last year. Uh, Daily News, this is Detective Sergeant Harris of the 12th Precinct. I'm uh, very proud to report that the first baby of 1976 was born right here in this squad room. <laughs> Uh, yes, ma'am. Yeah, it was 12.02. What do you mean, third? <laughs> Story of my life. Anyone helping you? No, and I've been waiting for over half an hour. Oh, well, someone will be along soon. Great day to be late. Oh, how are you, Wojo? Looks like you've been up all night. <laughs> Moonlighting again? Uh, no. It, uh, 
As it happens, I had a social engagement which lasted longer than I had anticipated or could possibly have hoped for. Congratulations. Yeah. Meanwhile, I've been trying to handle things here alone. Oh, yeah? Where's, uh, where's Barney? I had this guy, so Barney had to go out on a call with Dietrich. Oh, I thought we were, uh, getting some extra help. Yeah, but it's not here yet. So, uh, in the meantime, you think you might take care of Miss Jacobs there? Who's getting kind of surly? Oh, yeah, sure. Just, uh, requires a little special knack with the older types, you know what I mean? <laughs> Miss Jacobs? Hi. I'm Detective Harris. If you'll have a seat right over there, we'll be right with you. Both of you? Uh, no, I meant me. Then say what you mean, for heaven's sakes. <laughs> Get over there and sit down in that seat. Right there. <laughs> Morning, fellow detectives. Morning, Levitt. Morning, Levitt. <laughs> Anything going down? Uh. Not much, Levitt. I, uh, I suppose I should take Sergeant Yamana's desk. I suppose. <laughs> Didn't go up any higher. Okay, ma'am. The uh, problem? I want that smut shop closed down. Well, ma'am, I'm going to need a little more information. Could you uh, give me an address? 125 Christopher Street. And uh, the name of the establishment? The Morrow Gallery. But, ma'am, that's an art gallery. So? It's still got smut in the windows. Ma'am, it, uh, ma it has a very distinguished reputation. It also has very filthy paintings of naked women lying around on sofas. One filthy picture after another. Well, ma'am, I mean, there are many people who admire such works. To me, it's filth. Well, you know the saying, one man's meat is... <laughs> Strike that. Well, first thing, what'd you haul it? Yeah, uh, yeah, 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 I can haul it. Barney's been shot. What? what? Where? I don't know. I mean, the dispatch just called it in and put me on hold. What happened to the... I don't know. as he was shot. Uh, I'm trying Bellevue now. I feel so helpless. Uh, whoa, look, man, he's, he's, he's gonna be okay. First time in a month he goes out on a call. This happens. Yeah. I talked to Colgan. They haven't heard anything downstairs. Yeah, he's, he's talking to Bellevue right now. If he needs blood, I'm available. Yeah. 
I'm also willing to donate certain organs. Oh, please. <laughs> I'm going to call St. Luke's, all right? Right. I'll call Mercy General. I meant that about the organs. <laughs> Morning, Harris. Well, nice. I mean, you're all right, Wolf. What happened? We ran into a robbery in progress at uh, Hunterman's Deli. Uh, Dietrich's on the way down to Manhattan South, a couple of uh, suspects. My dispatch said you got shot. I did. <laughs> That's it? Oh, it was just a, a graze. Uh, went into St. Luke's emergency. They patched it up. I was just calling there, sir. You were calling hospitals? Well, they told us you were shot. We were prepared for the worst. Hey, I'm sorry. Listen, I, you know, it was just a <laughs> communications follow-up. I hope I didn't cause you any undue anxiety. Oh, no. Anxiety. Forget it, boss. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> well, it was pretty painful. Oh, well, yeah, sure. Look at it. I bet it was. Well, we appreciate your cooperation. Uh, Barney? <laughs> Uh, ma'am, why, why don't you just have a seat? I, uh, I spoke to the manager, and, uh, they got some pretty hot stuff going on over there. They got some Renoir, some Gauguin, some uh, new <laughs> Nothing that could be termed, uh, participatory. <laughs> ma'am, what we have is a perfectly reputable art gallery exhibiting some, uh, Admittedly frank, but perfectly acceptable artworks. Bullhooey! <laughs> Miss Jacobs, there is a vast distinction between a delicate Renoir nude and a pornographic picture. What's that, sir? <laughs> one is art and one is, uh, not. <laughs> That's very logical, sir. Thank you. Oh, I know some people enjoy these things. But let them do it in private. Do they have to flaunt them? Oh, ma'am. Set them up so that everyone is forced to look at them? Please. Is that Ma fair? Ma'am, all I can suggest is that you walk on the other side of the street. Feisty little mother. <laughs> oh, speaking biologically, of course, sir. <laughs> Oh, hi, Liz. Hi, Ron. How are you? I'm fine. Good. Hi, Liz. Hi, Stan. Hi, Liz. Hi. What, uh, what brings you down? Well, I, I was just in the neighborhood, and so I, I thought I'd stop in and say hello. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you got shot. Uh, how did you, uh... St. Luke's call. Uh, something about insurance. Liz, it was a scratch. Nothing, a paper cut would have been worse. Liz, I... I... <laughs> I'll be in my office. All all calls? Did I say that? No, sir. <laughs> Screen them. Yes, sir. Screen them. <laughs> I'm beginning to understand his subtleties. It's getting worse and worse. There are fewer and fewer of you out there. And there are more and more of them. It just seems that way. Well, I, I, I really wonder sometimes what it would be like to live somewhere else. Such as? Such as Long Island. Long Island. Connecticut? Uh-huh. Sweden? Sweden? It's very law-abiding there this time of year. <laughs> talk about it. Talk about it. Well, but nothing ever seems to happen. I have a responsibility here. Well, sometimes, Barney, I really don't know how much longer... I don't know how much longer things can go on like this. What kind of things? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I'm just rambling. <laughs> Liz, I'm okay. I'm okay. Well, if you say so. 
Everything's fine. Okay. Okay, everything's fine. Got it. We're on our way. Disturbance. Guess where, Harris? Yeah? The Moreau Gallery, Christopher Street. Oh, okay. Let's get it. Right. <laughs> Hi. Liz. Liz. Listen, why don't we think about going somewhere this weekend? Sure, sure. Anything you say. We'll talk about it when I get home, huh? Okay. Bye. 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 Was that Mrs. Miller? Yeah, yeah. Past tense was unintentional. <laughs> Okay, Mrs. Jacobs, you uh, remember the detective squad room? If you'll have a seat right over here, please. This is more than just vandalism, you know. This is an assault. All right, I am obligated to ask. What happened? Well, Bart, apparently, uh, after leaving here, Miss Jacobs went back down to the gallery and uh, threw a bottle of shoe polish all over one of the paintings. I'm entitled to my opinion. <laughs> and um, this is Mr. Levant. He's uh, one of the owners of the gallery. Why do I get all the crazy? I'm not crazy, smut peddler. Wait, wait, wait. Hold it down, hold it down. <laughs> Excuse me, sir, where should I put the painting? Down. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Look at it. Desecrated. Ravaged. All right, we'll try and straighten it out. What can we straighten out, Captain? We're talking about a piece of art, not a TV set. A painting is a singularly unique, irreplaceable expression of one person's most intimate perception. I understand and that. And that frame costs 70 bucks. <laughs> I take it you are pressing charges. As a matter of principle, yes. All right, Miss Jacobs, if you'll accompany uh, Detective Harris, uh, I'm afraid we're going to have to book you. Someone had to do something. Ma'am. Mr. Levant, if you'll have a seat right here, please. Levitt, do you want to get some information from Mr. Levant? Interesting work. Yeah, uh-huh. You see how the subtle shadings of light and dark entwine to create a naturalistic yet eloquent symbol of the woman eternal? Nice body, too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey. Don't blame yourself. What? Huh? My wife walked out on me two years ago. My wife hasn't walked out on Suddenly, me. Suddenly, one day she but says, Mr. Loftus, Milt, I can't handle it. It's not necessary, Mr. Loftus. And when we got married, she knew what I was. I mean, I told her right up front what it'd be like. The lousy hours, late evenings, temporary separations. And she agreed. Right? Well, didn't your wife agree? Yeah. Uh, Barn? I uh, got all the pertinent information on uh, Miss Jacobs. Uh, what do you want me to do with her? I don't know. I know how you feel. <laughs> all right, let me see what I can do. Mr. Levant, if, uh, if Miss Jacobs agreed to reimburse you for the painting, would, uh, would you consider dropping the charges? That's fine with me. I'll need a check for $1,100. I don't have $1,100. That's unfortunate. <laughs> Look, can, can, can something be done to, uh, to restore the painting? Yeah, I suppose so, but it's not a cheap process. I don't want it restored. Miss Jacobs, if, uh, if this painting can be restored, Mr. Levant may agree to drop the charges. What would it cost? It's hard to say. I said no! Miss Jacobs, are, are you just being difficult? Or is there something about this particular painting that uh, disturbs you? Um, when was this thing painted? I believe in the late 30s. Huh? Lovely woman. you, isn't it? Well, I 
could understand that modesty... It wasn't meant for public viewing, don't you understand? It was a very personal thing. Oh, do whatever you want with it. I, I don't care. It, it's not important anymore. Mr. Levant, in view of the circumstances, don't you think you can find it, uh, find some way of absorbing the cost of restoring? Absorb the cost? Don't you think she's contributed enough to the painting? Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Mr. Levant has agreed to uh, restore the painting himself. You're, uh, you're free to go. I want the painting. That'll be $1,100. I told you, I don't have that kind of money. I'm sorry, Mr. Levan. Now, wait. Prices in the art world are not carved in stone. They are negotiable, are they not? Yeah, I suppose. Why don't you make him an offer? $20. Oh, God. <laughs> uh, make her a counteroffer. 900 $21? This is ridiculous. I'm sure you two will eventually agree on a price. Uh, Levitt, you want to help him down with the uh, painting? Uh, My pleasure, sir. Mr. Levant, thank you for it. Yeah, yeah. Miss Jacobs, goodbye. Goodbye, Captain. <laughs> Professional curiosity. <laughs> you are lovely. Well, what do you say? Seven hundred. Twenty-three dollars. <laughs> the frame alone is worth seventy dollars. Get your coat. I got your bail ticket. Hey, see, the system really works. <laughs> Harrison Dietrich, check out already? Uh huh. Listen, uh, you might as well cut out too. Yeah, uh, I was going to go after uh, dropping off this off, but um. Okay, fine. Well. I don't have to go now. You know, if you feel like talking. Yeah, no hurry, Barney. Go <laughs> home. Uh -huh. All right, I'll, uh, I'll see you. Good night, Mr. Loftus. Take it easy. I mean it. Thank you. Okay. Oh. Hey, lady, give him a break. I mean, you knew what you were getting into when you married him. Come on, come on. Yeah, okay. Who are you? Just a friend of Barney's. Let's go. All right. I came back to uh, clarify my position. Oh. That would be nice. You know all those things I said earlier about wanting to be somewhere else? And so on and so on. And so on. Well, I... I meant it. Oh? I know how important this job is to you. But... Excuse me, sir, I... Uh, oh. <laughs> Excuse me, Mrs. Miller. I, uh, I worked up the manpower request and I gave it to Kogan. Fine, love it. Uh, if there's nothing else, I'll be checking out. No, no, there's nothing else. Except to say I'm very pleased with uh, your work today. Thank you, sir. <laughs> He's a remarkable man. I guess you know that. Love it. I just thank God we didn't lose him. Love it. I meant, may the force be with you. Thank you, Levitt. You know, in situations like this, one really must have a sense of humor, or else one must move to Sweden. Sweden? Uh, just an expression, Levitt. Just an expression. Oh, you mean like the country? Same spelling, different meaning. Oh. Well, good night. 
Good night. I love you. I love you. Wait for me, will you? I always have. There's a snap in the air. You can almost hear it. And gentlemen, it's getting quite Christmassy. I must have passed five Santa Clauses on the way over from the hotel. <laughs> you know, that, that reminds me of the, the first time we took David to see Santa Claus over at Macy's. As hard as we tried, we couldn't get him to sit on his lap. <laughs> Next year we went back, they, they talked for 45 minutes. Kid had a list that long. <laughs> you all right, Barn? Yeah, fine. Is that a new suit, Bart? Yeah. yeah. Oh, that always puts me in a good mood, too. Really? Yeah, and I buy suits all the time. Must give you a real rush. <laughs> uh, what do we got here? Uh, uh, Arnold Cummings, male Caucasian, trying to hold up a liquor store in Lexington. They didn't have to torture me. Torture? Apparently, when he tried to leave the store, the clerk tackled him, then locked him in a room before he called A room? Him. It was a closet, without any windows, no air. When we arrived, we found him scratching at the door, whimpering. I'm a claustrophobic! My sympathies, Mr. Cummings. I really can't stand being cooped up. I'm afraid you may have come to the wrong place, Mr. Cummings. <laughs> Uh, take a statement, pictures, prints, the whole... Oh, okay, Captain. Yeah. Claustrophobia. Just another sob story, huh, sir? Actually, claustrophobia is a very real and legitimate illness. Uh, Dietrich, I, I really don't have time to talk about it. Now I have to, uh, answer the phone. I didn't know that. Sure. Fear of being confined in an enclosed place is just one of many neurotic phobias. There's agoraphobia. Fear of open places. Xenophobia, fear of strangers. Acrophobia, fear of height. We got a possible burglary in progress on 13th. Well, uh, volunteer. <laughs> Take Dietrich with you. Come on, Arthur, we got business. Okay, we'll pick it up later. I'd like to. <clears throat> you know, uh, phobia is a sort of a hobby with me. Oh, really? Yeah. Is there a word for the fear of being enclosed in a confined place, but uh, only with certain people? I'm not sure. We can talk about it in the car. <laughs> Thank you. 
Hey, Mrs. Miller. Hi, Stan. <laughs> oh, oh, it's good to see you. Yeah, you too. No, thank you. What you doing here? I mean, um, well, we don't get much of a chance to see you, you know, since... Uh, oh, uh, since Barney and I separated. Guess that must be a reason. Yeah. <laughs> well, we, uh, we meet from time to time um, by virtue of our joint checking account. <laughs> I'll go Is get Barney. Barney. <laughs> Thanks. Guess who's here? My wife. You were expecting her? Yeah. That's why you got the suit. <laughs> What is this preoccupation with my wardrobe? Can't a man get a new suit once in a while? Sorry. <laughs> Hi. Hi. How have you, uh... How have you been? Fine. Thanks. Is that a new suit? Sure is. <laughs> it's, uh, uh very... right, Come on, Perry, inside here. Okay, I'm going. Oh, hi, Liz. Hi, Rob. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. How have you been? It's fine. I've been okay. <laughs> uh, hey, I uh, haven't been seeing much of you. Well, <laughs> thank you for noticing. Yeah. Oh, uh, I, I hope I'm not interrupting anything. Oh, no, I... no, no. I, I, I wait in the office. Uh, uh, excuse me. Of course. <laughs> It's great to see you again. Oh, it's great to see uh, you I'll again. I'll be in a minute. What do we got? Oh, it's great to what see you again. again. <laughs> oh, um, Barn, this is uh, Clyde Perry. I uh, caught him ripping off the Perfecto Toy Company. Is that the loot? Uh, yeah, got himself quite a haul. A boomerang, a race car, <laughs> cute little doll, a yo-yo. I'm really just a big kid. And uh, this, which I haven't given a name to. Yet. Looks like someone's insights. No signs of a struggle. It's dark. I didn't know what I was picking up. Uh, where's Dietrich? He's uh, bringing the owner down. All right, tag all that stuff and uh, do something with that. Uh, Perry, come on, take a seat over here. Come on, can't you give me a break? Otherwise, I'm going to be spending Christmas in jail. Hey, where you spend it doesn't matter. It's who you're with. Uh, $420, the Greenwich Hotel. Rent, three weeks. Rent. Small room. Mm hmm Single bed. I see. Better than Central Park. <laughs> Listen, uh, about Christmas morning, what time do you think I should come by? Oh, well, you know David. <laughs> He'll be up at 5.30. All <laughs> right. <laughs> Maybe I should come uh, Christmas Eve and wait. Rachel won't be there until 9. Fine. Mm. <laughs> Uh, Madison Sporting Goods, twelve dollars. Bullets. Ah, uh, so bullets. <laughs> Listen, uh, I, I got a call from Mr. Woodman. He uh, wondered why he hadn't heard from us about the cabin. Oh, I forgot all about that. Uh, well, no, I didn't forget all about that. I just um, put it out of my mind. Huh. I just. Natural assumption on his part. I mean, every year, 14 years. 15. <laughs> 15. In any case, I guess he just took it for granted we'd be taking it again, you know. Yes, well, of course, he had no way of knowing. Yeah, so I told him I'd, um, let him know. Um, Marioni's Cafe, $36. Some little Italian place on 23rd Street? Thirty-six dollars, dinner for two. 
I see. <laughs> me and Inspector Luger. Well, he's had his eyes on me for a long time. <laughs> Let me tell you all about the toy business. It's all thieves and cutthroats. I thought it was mostly elves. <laughs> Stefan Medling, owner of the company. Oh, how do you do? Uh, I'm Sergeant Harris. Where is my ooze? <laughs> you know exactly what I'm talking about. Everybody's after it. Uh, could you possibly be referring to this? Oh, thank God, it's, it's safe. Uh, have you any idea how many people would just love to get their hands on it? I wouldn't even hazard a guess. It's going to be the hottest item on the market next season. Look, look how it oozes in and out of your fingers. Out of your fingers. It is beautiful. And it's completely harmless if swallowed and, and it doesn't stain close. It's quite a breakthrough. <laughs> <laughs> you have to run now? Well, I'm sure you have a lot of work you have to do. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> listen, uh, uh, don't worry about that. About what? Oh, uh, Mr. Woodman. I'll, uh, I'll call him. I'll explain the whole situation. Oh, sure. Right. Well, I'm sure he's not going to have any trouble renting that place. Oh, no. It's a lovely place. Oh, sure. The loft. <laughs> stone fireplace. Yeah. Resist. I know. Yes. Oh, what is it? Captain, my. Uh... Oh, excuse me, Mrs. Miller. It's all right. I don't think we've ever really been introduced. I'm Arthur Dietrich. Oh, how do you do, Arthur? Of course, the captain's told us a lot. Uh, what is it, Dietrich? <laughs> we'll talk later. <laughs> I got a lead from the owner of a toy company. It may be a case of industrial espionage. Uh huh, yeah. All right, check it out. Yes, sir. I'm sorry for the interruption. No, it's, it's okay. Okay. I'm going now. Yeah, fine. I'll be out of here in a second. I'm gone. You. Pardon me. Hey! I want out! Hold it down, coming! I want out of here! I'm going to put the cuffs on. Let me out! I'm suffocating! I'm... Mommy! Daddy! I think you have Let... your hands full. Let me out! Uh, we'll talk later. Uh, goodbye, everybody. It's Bye. nice to see you. Let me out! Sir, <laughs> so what should I do? Let him out! That makes sense. <laughs> Who's that? Mr. Metterling, the father of Ooze. Ah, yes. <laughs> Mr. Metterling, I'm Captain Miller. I'd just like to say that we're going to do everything we can to clear this up. Oh, sure. That's what they told me last year when they stole my sludge. <laughs> sludge? It's not a pretty story. <laughs> In my office. Oh, Bart. It was, uh... Really great to see Liz. It's too bad she couldn't stay longer. Well, we just had some checks to go over and Christmas plans to finalize. You know. ah. Took uh, turkey dinner with the family, huh? No, just just Christmas morning with the kids. Oh. You're not going to stay for dinner? <laughs> this is all very silly and stupid. Here's the rent. Oh, Bearman. So you thought you could get away with it, eh? My lawyer will be contacting your lawyer. Dietrich? This is Nathan Berman, owner of the Berman Novelty Company. Mr. Berman, I'm Captain Miller. I am completely innocent of anything. Trust you stole my sludge and oh, all you tried to crazy old man. Whoa, 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 gentlemen, please. Uh, he's talking gibberish, Captain. I know him for 35 years and he's no longer completely with us. Oh, listen, okay. Berman, I... Please, please, Mr. Berman. Mr. Berman, we're investigating a burglary, and uh, our information has it that uh, you might be able to shed some light on it. <laughs> I, I, I am a law-abiding merchant. Now, who, who would want to accuse me of anything like that? I never said a word, Mr. Berman. <laughs> you, 
you're not gonna take the water off of that cheap hoodlum. <laughs> oh. Well, I had a right to. The right to steal the sweat and genius of another man. What about my fuzzball? Oh, I already had one. And I suppose you already had speed checkers and baby comatose. So what about death race and Mr. Onion? Hold it, hold it, hold it. I'm not really concerned about speed checkers or death race or baby... Baby comatose. (laughs) What we are concerned with is... Burglary. I want him arrested for theft. And I want him arrested for patent infringement. Fine. You charge Mr. Meddling, Mr. Meddling will charge you, and it'll all be very nice. Okay, Harris, Mr. Berman, please, this way. Berman over here, please. Uh, Dietrich, Mr. Meddling. (laughs) Okay, Mr. Berman, you want to take a seat there? I've got to book you. On what charge? Grand theft ooze. Yeah. Finally finish those arrest reports you want. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Hey, uh, it's gonna make some fresh coffee. You want you want to talk? No, no, no. It's fine, thank you. Brian, right, why don't you come over to my house? What? For Christmas dinner. Come on, Wojo. I say, come on, Wojo. I mean, I'm making an invitation. You've probably got other plans. No, I haven't. Oh. Listen, I, you know, I can make a turkey and uh, pick up some beer and uh, it's a lot of good ball games. Sure. Sounds nice. Great. You're you're sure I'm not interrupting anything? I mean, uh, you're usually not without female companionship on such occasions. Oh, yeah, well... You know, my outlook on that has sort of changed. Oh? Yeah, I mean, uh... Well, the way my social life used to be, uh... Getting in a sack of Rooney was the main thing. (laughs) But, uh... There are other things, you know, like, uh, friendship. Just, uh, good feelings between people can be just as satisfying. It's very, uh, wise of you, Roger. Well, I've <laughs> I finally realized that sex wasn't everything. <laughs> well, I guess I don't have to tell you that. <laughs> I'm going under. I had to do something. I don't believe you. Place of birth, please. You think to hire a thug to rob your competitor is the act of a solvent man? Eastern Poland. (laughs) What happened? I overestimated the 50s craze. Who didn't? I have 14,000 hula hoops stacked up like tires. Do you want to trade? For what? Pooper sticks. <laughs> I have a warehouse full of them. Forget it. You can't give them away. How's it going? I lost interest. <laughs> You're reconsidering. Problems, gentlemen? Nothing you can help, Captain. <laughs> Mr. Meddling, uh, we're going to need your signature on this complaint form. Yes, I know, Captain Miller, but, but then, uh, uh, But what? Mr. Berman has been stuck with 14,000 hula hoops. That's punishment enough. How about you, Mr. Berman? Are we going to proceed with patent infringement? Well, with the courts the way they are now, <laughs> I'd be dead before it comes to trial. And even if I win, what will I get? August sticks. <laughs> to get it. Okay, I guess that means uh, both you gentlemen are free to go. Uh, Meddling, don't forget your uh, ooze. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> what about me? Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, Barn, we got him red-handed. 
Oh, come on, it's, it's, it's almost Christmas. Well, everybody's dropping charges, turn them loose. Oh, bless you, Captain. Yeah, yeah. God bless you. God bless everyone. All right, all right, come on, let's go, Tiny Tim. <laughs> We're back. Oh, have a nice little walk. <laughs> Wonderful. Good, good. <laughs> uh, good. We've been gone for quite a while. Huh? I made approximately 35 circuits around the block. <laughs> if you wish, sir, uh, I'll run them over the tombs now. Tombs? Oh. Take them over to Bellevue and uh, introduce them around. Yes, sir. Bellevue. I am more sick than I am criminal. Absolutely. <laughs> okay, Cummings, let's go. Oh, oh Mrs. Miller. Oh, hi, hi, Leonard. Hi. Hello. Um, I'm the man who was screaming. <laughs> oh, yes. Uh, yes, it, it's very nice to see you again. You're very lovely. Oh, thank you. Uh, don't mind him, he's crazy. <laughs> oh, oh, I, I, I didn't mean in his opinion. I meant in a general way. You are lovely. Love it. I wasn't trying to move in, sir. <laughs> Come on, Clemens, that's fine. Hello. Hello. Uh, when I got home, I found some more checks. Oh. It took me quite a while, but I found it. Barney, uh, I, I, I think I'll go downstairs and check that roster board. Fine. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'll... <laughs> the checks. Oh, the checks, yes. Here. Uh, another reason that I, I came back was because I really left in the middle of things. Well, it was kind of hectic. <laughs> yeah. Oh. I was thinking about the cabin. Have you changed your mind? No. I always wanted to take it. Oh. <laughs> Pretty amusing the way it did that. Yeah. <laughs> will, uh, will you call Mr. Woodman? Yes, of course. Uh, look, uh, I, I know it's just for a few days, and it's really mainly for the kids. And it's not going to solve all the problems. Now, listen, Barney. Let's not start talking and discussing and analyzing things, because every time we do that, we get into trouble. <laughs> We're just going to go, all right? Fine. Fine. You know the uh, first thing I'm going to do when I get there? What? I'm going to start a fire in a big stone fireplace. Oh, yeah, well, it does get very uh, cold inside. Maybe we'll maybe some um, hot brandy. Oh, yeah. It's been very snowy up there, too, you know. I, I do hope the roads are open. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, well, I'll, uh, I'll get out the snow chains. Listen, uh, uh, I, I'm not going to be able to make Christmas dinner. You're not? No, we, we just changed our plans. We, we, we're going to take the, uh, the cabin in Vermont after all. Oh, well, uh, 
Well, that's great. <laughs> we'll do it another time. Sure. Huh? Yeah. All right. Listen, would you like to come by Christmas morning? Well, hey, the kids hey, go to barn. Well, I, I get the feeling I'm deserting you. I've already. You know, in the office when I was, uh, I was telling you about uh, friendship and, and good feelings between people and yeah. how it's uh, just as important as, uh, yeah. Why do you mean it? 